The Syrian regime continues to unleash all-out assaults against its people. Heavy shelling was reported today in Aleppo, Homs, and Damascus. Here in Aleppo, where shelling and aerial bombing by the Syrian forces continued, and the rebels fought back. From what you uh, understand, Ivan, are the rebels prepared to stay and fight for Aleppo at this point? Absolutely. They are... They see this as the battle for Syria now. If a city that has been universally recognized as a stronghold for Assad, uh, there, uh, it tends to be a place where Assad supporters are, not people who are sympathetic with the rebellion. So you can confirm that basically this is people from outside of Aleppo who are basically trying to infiltrate the city in order to uh, swing it around towards the, the rebellion. That is absolutely, absolutely the truth. Um, you could easily tell that because the battle has been moving, you know, it, it's not uh, been, uh, the insurgents, you can track their movements and they have been moving to where the battle is. And right now, uh, where the battle is, is Aleppo, so they've been uh, flooding into there. And it's not just from all around Syria, it's also from all around the Middle East. Aleppo is facing, it's facing an attack by foreigners, it's not facing a grassroots uprising, as they're trying to portray Exactly. So that's interesting because if they can frame it as if this was something that was happening within the city spontaneously, then any violence that happens there must be the result of a government crackdown. Whereas in reality, it's the exact opposite. The violence that's happening there is because the rebels are trying to infiltrate and to start violence in the city. The regime can use these uh, chemical weapons anywhere against the Syrian people. General, you said do not trust the regime, that they could potentially use these chemical weapons against their own people. These people can do anything you can imagine. And he's not got desperate enough yet? Not desperate enough yet. Nobody in Syria is concerned that the government would use chemical weapons against the Syrian population. There's no game to be made there. It's totally, uh, it's going to kill everybody across the board. It's going to alienate everybody against the government. It's a totally lose-lose situation. I mean, it would not benefit them at all to use it. And they're there only as a deterrent uh, for foreign attack, basically. That's well, well, that's the thing that strikes me. It's so cartoonish to think that even if Assad was as evil as he is being portrayed and as hell-bent on killing people, uh, clearly there's no strategic benefit at all to using these weapons against your own population. So I don't understand how people can be expected to believe that. But clearly, even though that spokesperson was saying we would not use it on civilians, is your, are you saying that they would? Yes, because everything anybody from the Syria regime does say this is completely uh, something they cannot uh, hold for it. They lied and lied and lied for m uh, more than a year and a half in every aspect, in everything, including this uh, uh, myth about the Al-Qaeda working in Syria, which I have a confirmed information that there is no any existence to Al-Qaeda in Syria unless it is like few individual people came from here or there, that's it. But as an organization, nothing. Syria conflict jihadists role growing when peaceful protests demanding regime change in syria erupted 16 months ago there were no signs of the presence of jihadist groups on the ground other than the claims of the regime in reaction to the violent measures the regime has implemented against peaceful protesters some syrians have resorted to arms in this context the free syrian army was formed from def defecting army soldiers in order to protect protesters and to fight against the Bashar al-Assad regime, according to their statements. Simultaneously, however, jihadists, those committed to establishing an Islamic state by violent means, have started to be seen on the battlefield in Syria, which became a highly stre streamed topic on the jihadist online forums. The FSA is scrutinizing jihadists in Syria very closely, considering them a real threat after the Assad regime falls, according to a senior FSA officer. Uh, we have a very dangerous set of uh, actors in the region, Al-Qaeda, Hamas, and those who are uh, on our terrorist list, to be sure, supporting, claiming to support the opposition. You 
uh, Assad and his government have been saying this since day one, and they've been derided as conspiracy theorists in the mainstream me media like the BBC. Oh, that's just a crazy conspiracy theory, outside forces. But of course, now, it, as it's uh, becoming absolutely undeniable, they're just letting that piece of information in through the door. Oh yeah, by the way, there's tons of jihadists there. We don't know how they got there or who they're being funded by, but, but they're there. Yes, um, people in bloodied shirts uh, being paraded up to a wall and then uh, fired on with machine gun fire for a good 30, 40 seconds of straight machine gun fire. Um, it's, it's quite a horrific thing to behold. And unfortunately, this is the type of thing that happens in these conflicts. And wow, surprise, surprise, the rebels are doing these types of horrible things. But I thought they were the wonderful, happy, freedom-fighting protesters who were just marching with signs and, and asking Assad, please, please give us our country back. But Assad kept killing them brutally. Well, it turns out that that idea might have been a lie. Of course, we all were already knew that that was a lie. They're talking about, well, this is probably going to be a problem when this is all over because we have these radical jihadists who are basically the ones who are doing the fighting here and they're probably going to want a piece of the pie so in that way it's uh, actually <laughs> quite similar to what happened in libya because of course we saw with the uh, the Gaddafi government was uh, very much not a, a part of that that radical islam which unfortunately once again is is taking over there and it happened with egypt the muslim brotherhood so we've seen this and it, this isn't anything new this has been going on since at the very least the 1950s when pan-arab nationalism was coming to power in Egypt with Nasser, etc. And uh, that was overthrown by the creation of the Muslim Brotherhood, which was originally being propped up by the Eisenhower government. If you look at Syria on a map, it's in a very strate strategic spot. Uh, it's kind of uh, in the center of the world, we like to say, because it's uh, got all of the continents around it, the European continent, Asia, Africa. And also it's uh, got access to the five seas, the Mediterranean, the Caspian Sea, uh, it's close to the Suez Canal. So if you control this area of the world, you know, you have a lot of sway as to what's happening, trade, etc. It's, it's the, if you control this area, you control the world. Um, so that's, of course, one part of it. Uh, so in controlling this area, you can uh, get an uh, oil pipeline flowing. Yes, we can mention the oil. The oil. Not so much taking the oil, but controlling the oil flow is more important than the oil, oil itself. Um, and in this way, you can also uh, push away rival economies uh, such as Russia and China that have their own um, uh, outline for how they would like to, to progress their economies. On the diplomatic front, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov accused the West of trying to use blackmail to secure a new UN Security Council resolution that could allow for the use of force in Syria. I believe it is absolutely counterproductive and a dangerous approach. Russia, now under the, the helm of Putin, is not going to just roll over and, uh, and let the NATO forces gut that country like they gutted Libya, especially because Syria is, it does, of course, have close strategic strategic ties to Russia. And because of that, the uh, the Anon process was doomed from the beginning. This once again goes to show that the very heart of the matter is the outside intervention that is making this possible. The Free Syrian Army is being supported and staged and funded and trained and equipped from within Turkey across the border with uh, NATO complicity and with the, uh, the help of smuggled supplies that are coming in through Iraq and are being supplied by Saudi Arabia and Qatar. That was, uh, that was even confirmed by the BBC in February of this year. So once again, we know this is a completely foreign agitated event, and to whatever extent there does exist legitimate opposition to, Syria, to the Syrian government within Syria, what's happening there right now is not a representation of that, it is not a spontaneous outgrowth of that, it is something that has been stirred up from the outside. The Assad regime continues to wage war on the Syrian people. Uh, it is more essential than ever that uh the United States and the international community continue to uh, work together uh, through the United Nations, uh, through whatever uh, possible vehicles we have to bring additional pressure on Assad to step down uh, and to allow for a, a peaceful transition of government there uh, in Syria. But there's a chance to save the Syrian state from a catastrophic uh, assault that would be very 
uh, dangerous not only to Syria but to the region. Uh, the Syrian government continues to um, uh, attack um, uh, its own people and the bloodshed uh, has not uh, ceased um, and we have to uh, do everything we can to end the violence and uh, create a framework for a transition. We are approached on a regular basis by representatives of different groups within Syria who are terrified of what comes next. Uh, I don't know how else to say it. You don't like BBC? BBC Kulu. Why? Say it. No, I mean BBC huh? say it. Because you are, te you are talking the very bad about Syria. You are not telling the truth but about But you know what? Syria. This is no. But this is the first time I've been able to come to Syria. No, why before My first you didn't visa. come? Why before you didn't come? I didn't come? have a visa. No, why you, di you didn't get the visa? We've been waiting for a visa to no, come to no, tell no, your story. No, no, no. It's not correct. Everybody can come to Syria and get visa. No, but tell me, tell me what you think is what is the lie that's being told? What do you think is not you being told? You lie because you are talking truth, uh, not truth about the Syria. Okay. Everybody when he when BBC Arabic he can. Uh, here's a lie Jazeera about Syria, yes. Al Jazeera but, and yes. Arabia. But what is even the and we have not the de demonstration, we have armed young. But even the president said there needs to be some change. No, no yes, yes. He did say Ch that. Change, change. Yes. We, we, he we, said hey, there are some legitimate grievances. He is always doing to make that change. Yes. He is trying always to make the change. Mm. So is it we support him? But you are telling the, the lie about the Syria. Mr. Now finish. Mr. Okay. I just want to yes. tell you something. Now you are representing the BBC. Yes. You have to know you are working in BBC and all people that they are working in Jazeera Al Arabiya, that everybody in Syria, population of Syria, they know very British that you are lying. This is the most important.